when I, I was born in Japan, so, and we lived out in the country, and there was no refrigeration, so we had uh, saba, which is in English a macro. That was our main dish every single night for dinner, was basically macro. Once in a while, my father would kill the chicken, and we would have chicken, but the main meal was saba, or macro, and sometimes the Japanese people, we would eat uh, kujira is whale meat, which is not politically correct nowadays, but in those days, after the war, you ate what was available, otherwise you went hungry. And today, my favorite meal is, I make a chicken namba, which is very easy to make. I learned it on, an, on, the, uh, on my NHK computer when I go to the Japanese part, and you just cut up a, what do you call it, a chicken breast, and then uh, you, dip it in uh, flour and then an egg and then you lightly fry it very light in very little oil and the sauce is what makes it good the sauce is made with meeting and sugar and a little bit of sake and you and you just put the sauce on top and it's very tender and uh, my husband loves it and i like it now it's one of my favorite meals <laughs> my favorite meal for new year's that my mother used to make in america the osechi ryori she would make the most delicious makizushi which is now in restaurants they call it futomaki, but hers was homemade and it had, uh, the filling had uh, seasoned eel meat, eel fish rather, and it was a delicious, she knew how to make the rolled makizushi the best, no one has ever repeated that. And I, I never learned, which I regret. I came here when I was nine years old at 1955. Okay. Actually, this is my mother's hometown. She's a Nisei Kibe, so she was born in Portland went through eighth grade and then went to high school in Hiroshima, Japan. And my father was born in Redlands, California. He's also a U.S. citizen, but he, his family moved back to Japan when he was a child. So they're like Nisei Kibes, we call them. They were born in America, but educated in Japan, and they got married in Japan. And my sister and I were born right after the war, World War II, 1940s, <laughs> that big war. So you were born in... In Japan, in, Japan in, in the little village of Shiba, it's a rice farming village, about 20 minutes from the city center of uh, Hiroshima. It's like from, you know, where I live now, I'm going to downtown, it takes 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So it was a, like a suburb of Hiroshima. But in those days, they didn't have good public transportation before the war, because we had to take the, the road to the city was not paved, and it was through the mountain range. So we, the bus only ran once in the morning and once in the evening on a dirt road, one lane road, by the way, just telling you. It's still there. It's now paved, and I, my, my cousin drove me on that road. The Issei generation, the first generation wanted their children to be bilingual. So my mother was born here in Portland, but she went to Japanese school every day after the regular American school, and on Saturdays, half a day, year round. So she was fluent in both languages. She can read the Chinese characters, Matter of fact, after the war, she was like an interpreter and worked for the uh, American government in Hiroshima translating. So we came back because my grandma wanted to see her grandchildren. So we came back on a boat, two-week boat ride or ship from uh, Kobe, Bay, Japan, to Seattle, and then they picked us up in Seattle. Did your parents meet in the United States, or did they meet in they, Japan? Somebody introduced them in Japan. They met in Japan. And so that's why they were married in Japan, and then the war started, and they couldn't come back till after the war was over. And then they couldn't come back right after the war because I think there was a lot of, after the war, I think they have to, there's a, probably a quota, quota system for immigration. So in order for our whole family of four of us to come back, we, had, we waited, we couldn't come back till 1955. So, wow. so, so I've been here ever since, okay. <laughs> so you, when you were in Japan growing up, your grandparents lived here in Portland. Yes, they were, during the war, they were at Minadoka with my aunt and, you know, all my relatives were there. Wow. But uh, the harder life was in Japan because during the war, you know, they almost starved to death. There was very harsh conditions in Japan during the war. Besides, the big bomb came. And my mother was pregnant with me when the bomb was dropped. So I'm very grateful to be alive every day. Well, <laughs> the, the bomb was dropped at Hiroshima. Yeah, which was but only 20 minutes away. away. So the only thing that saved us was the mountain range that surround, the hills and mountains that surround. If you, if you had that barrier 
it saved you. You didn't. You weren't injured or killed. Yeah, that's amazing. So yeah. you didn't suffer from radiation or anything. No, but my mother thing. lived through. You know, they had the black rains afterwards that came, and she died of cancer when she was seventy-three. So, she, but my father lived till ninety-three, and he walked to the city a couple of days after the bombing. So he was exposed to all that. So you grew up in Portland from the age of nine onward. And graduated from University of Oregon. Okay. Yeah, class of 68. And let's see, I, then I became a school teacher. I went to Southern California, taught fourth grade for three years. And then I, then I went to Waseda University for one year for post-baccalaureate work in Tokyo. Then I came back, and then I went in the Army for 20 years. I'm a retired major, quartermaster officer. I met my husband in the Army 48 years ago. <laughs> my father used to take me in Japan. We, we, in, in Japan, people owned their own private mountains. We, had, we owned a mountain so near our house where we would go there, and he would take me as a child and go mushroom honey, matsutake, the Japanese mushroom. And so um, here, we're lucky. We have Mount Hood and other Cascade Ranges that have mushrooms growing. I don't know about this year because we didn't get very much rain. But I love to go foraging for mushrooms. I like to make matsutake gohan, the rice. You cook it in. That's very fragrant. And also, you can put them in a soup. You can put just a few pieces in a soup. It's delicious. I think we forage warabi. Um, warabi is, what is it in English? Um, you know those uh, fiddle? Ferns, ferns. Yeah, yeah, they're ferns. I call them what I don't know the English word, but we used to harvest that too. Those were edible. I brought my father, I think it was starting in 95 or shortly after, maybe it was November or December of 94 after my mom died. He told, he told us there's a senior lunch program here. So I start, when I was visiting here, I would bring him to here to the Ikonokai. The variety of foods you guys serve is great. Um, and people donate, you know, like, I know Ernie donates matsutake in the fall if they're available. And I like to go mushroom in Mount Hood too, but I only find like a dozen at the most <laughs> at any one time. And then uh, Bill Tani, he donates the razor clams. It's a very wonderful program, I think.